Welcome to this video on installing Langardian version 9 and higher. My name is Dahar Delaney, I'm Head of Technical Services here at Netford. So to get Langardian installed in your network, first thing you need to do is go to our website www.netforge.com where you can download a free trial of our software. You do need to allocate either a physical or virtual appliance for the software. So in my case I'm going to use a physical appliance, it's got two network cards so that's the main thing to watch out for. You do need to connect that into a managed switch on your network. So one interface connects as just the management interface and the second one here connects as the span or mirror port. So let's take a look at now where do you locate this on your network. Well this simple network here, I've got a core switch and this is where my servers and my firewall connect in. So this is an ideal place to connect LangGuardian. So I've got my two connections, the management interface connects in here to one port and the mirror port, the monitoring port is connected into the same switch. On this switch I then set up a span port or mirror port and I mirror or span the internet and the servers here. So you don't need to try and monitor every single port on the switch, just monitor servers and especially your internet gateway. So let's now, now take a look at the Langarnian installation. Okay, so I've downloaded an ISO file from the Nefo website. I burnt it on to a CD. I'm just booting up my server with the CD. Now again, the LangGuardian install does not require a base operating system. You don't need to have Windows or anything else pre-installed. It does include a operating system as part of the installation. So first thing here is it's going to tell me that it's going to overwrite the disks on the server. So I just want to continue with that. And it's also telling me here that uh, you need to have at least two gigabytes of memory. So we okay that. The next point here is telling me what disks are available on the server. So it's just one disk, so disk ID 1. I'm sure you want to continue. And type yes to that. So the next point here is showing I've got two network cards available. Now as a tip, when you plug in your network uh, cables into the server, leave just plug out the one that you're going to allocate for the span and mirror port. So just leave the management interface connected. So it just makes it easier at this point here to understand what interface is, is which. So I see here that interface number one is connected. So that's my management interface. So I'm just going to select that number one. We give it an IP address. Subnet mask. I, uh, gateway address. And finally a DNS server. Okay, so finally just want to make sure we confirm them settings, they look good to me, so just type yes. And the install starts, so this is now installing both the operating system and the LangGuardian software. So the whole process just takes a couple of minutes. At the end of this install here, we, we, we'll reboot the server. So it's telling me now to restart. So take out the CD, just going to restart, and at this point here, um, you probably go around the back of the server, just plug in both interface cards at this point. Because the next stage what we're going to do is we're going to set up port mirroring. So before I leave the computer room I just want to make sure that the boot sequence starts up here. So we have our little spinny here at the top left hand corner. Now you will get what look like error messages and some text come up on the screen. That's fine, they're, they're all mostly system checks. So it looks to be fine, it's booting up. At the next point, or at the end of this boot process, it's going to just tell you that this, the boot, is, uh, boot up process is complete and to go to your web browser. So it's best wait until you see that message and that just tells you the, the, inst the installation is fully complete and the system is now available that you can log on via your browser. So now let me go and show you what's involved in setting up a switch. Okay, I've now logged on to my core switch, which in my case happens to be a Cisco 3550 switch. So first thing I do is just go into enable mode here. 
And firstly, I want to check and make sure that there's no monitoring already set up. So we say show monitor. So that's fine. I didn't want to get the VLAN IDs that I want to monitor. So in my case here, I'm going to monitor VLAN 1 and VLAN 2. Because there are two VLANs where I've got devices plugged in. Now, it looks like VLAN 1 here is the most interesting. It's got lots of interfaces. And VLAN 2 has got small amounts. So I'm going to go for monitoring VLAN 1 and 2. So to do that, I go into configuration mode. And I type monitor session 1 source VLAN 1 space comma space 2. And I also need to specify on this particular switch RX. Now on pretty much every other Cisco switch you don't need to specify that. Um, but in my case, I do need to specify RX. But at the end, when you put in VLAN 1 and comma 2 there, you can just press return and the switch will tell you if it'll take it or if you need to specify RX. So the next part of the command I'm going to put in is we need to specify destination. Now this is the interface where I plugged in the uh, Langarnian uh, interface, which I'm using for my span port. So in my case, it's fast. Destination interface, fast Ethernet, zero slash 10 is what I plugged it into. Okay, so we can end out of that and just show mod. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've just done. So we've specified that we want to monitor VLANs one and two, and we're going to send that data out to port number 10. And that looks fine. That's where I've put, plugged my LAN Guardian in. So that's it from setting up the switch. That's now complete. Um, Nothing else needs to be done. We should be now getting traffic to Langardian. So let's log on, log on now to Langardian and find, complete the installation and just make sure everything's okay. Okay, you didn't load up the web, web interface. So to do that, just load up your web browser. We support all web browsers. Just make sure you're on the latest version. Just type in the IP address into your browser and press return. So we just review the license agreement. Click agree on that. Then we just step through the wizard. Double check your network settings, they look fine. If you use a proxy server on your network, sorry, let me just go back to the proxy settings. If you use a proxy server, now it's time to type in the settings. I don't use a proxy here, so that's fine. Set up your email alerts here. The SMTP server here is Usually a local SMTP server. Just make sure the SMTP server allows the Langarnian to send email. The next one is important, the system clock. I'm going to choose to use an NTP server here. It's important the Langarnian is running the correct time. So that's fine. The next screen we're going to set a user password or a GUI password. So this is for the administrator account. Um, we require a minimum of seven characters. So let me just type one in. Okay. Next up, we're going to configure Active Directory integration. So here we put in a user account in AD uh, with password and also the IP address of one domain controller. And there's further information available in our user guide in setting this up. You're going to choose to skip this at the moment, but I do recommend that you set up AD the very first time you set up your LAN Guardian. Just means that you'll have usernames in the reports from day one. So finally here, we need to configure our sensor. So we have a single sensor in this box. Um, it's up. I don't have any span traffic set up yet, so obviously I've disconnected my network cable. Oh, it's not disconnected. My span session isn't working. So there is a video guide here as well. I'm setting up the span session again. If the um, status here is, is shown that it's not getting span traffic, it's okay to continue. Um, we can fix the problem after. We'll just configure the Glen Guardian and come back to that. So now we log on. 
we type in the correct password. So I've now logged on to my LAN Guardian. So let me just do a quick check and make sure that we're capturing data from the network. So we click on, easiest thing to do is click on dashboard. So what we're looking for here is any activity being logged. So I'm picking up here HTTPS traffic. That's fine, there's a small amount, not much data yet in our graphs, but at least I can see here that we're picking up a small amount of traffic from the network. And that looks good. So that means the Langarnian is collecting data so we need to just leave it a while and come back to it and start running the reports. So that's all you need to do to get the Langardian installed in your network. If you need to find out more information about the Langardian, please visit our website www.netfort.com.